Welcome, everyone, to this presentation about the Media Technology Master of Science program at Leiden University. My name is Martin Lauers. I'm a researcher and a lecturer at Leiden University, and I'm strongly involved in the Media Technology uh, program. I'm joined here by two of our students, um, and maybe they can introduce themselves quickly. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Hendrik. I'm also uh, I'm a second year uh, media tech student, mm -hmm. uh, and I have a background in neuroscience. Neuroscience, yeah. very interesting. And what about you? Hi, I'm Zoe. I'm also a second year student, mm -hmm. uh, and I have a background in chemistry. In chemistry, yeah, both quite Science, scientific, uh, sciencey uh, backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> that could be. Well, <clears throat> um, what I would like to do is tell you a little bit about the program, but just a few highlights. Most of the things I'm going to say, you can already see that you can also see them in the videos that we've posted online. Now, the Media Technology Master of Science program is about actual scientific research. And, but, so we train researchers, that's, that's very important to understand. However, we train researchers, academic researchers, that use their personal inspira inspiration and personal creativity um, to do research, because we find that that's a very important part of coming up with new and interesting research. Now, to be able to do research, we all, it is our belief that it's very important for, for an academic, for a researcher, to master the tools, to master any tool. And that currently, <clears throat> the most flexible tool is di digital technology. So we find it very important that our students master digital technology, meaning they can program, they can build installations, build e experimental equipment, etc. Now, to make all this happen, we have this didactic approach where we try to s um, see students as much as possible as researchers, certainly in the second year. We take them to festivals, media arts festivals. We take them to conferences. We make them read papers, um, etc., etc. So this is really um, what the Media Technology Program is about. Now, if we look at some facts, it's organized by the uh, Leiden University Institute of Advanced Computer Science in collaboration with the Royal Academy of the Arts and the Royal, Royal Music School in The Hague, which is a city very close to Leiden. Um, it's a two-year program. It's been around, around, around for over 20 years already. It's a full-time program, and naturally, you receive a Master of Science diploma from a very good university once you complete it. The program is in English, and as a result, we have relatively many international students. And with international students, I mean non-Dutch students. Um, the gender ratio is, is very nicely balanced, um, always, every year in our program, which is a very nice thing, something that we very much appreciate. And we have roughly 25 to 35 students entering each year. Um, this number is not fixed, so we don't say, there's no maximum on it, so we just except whoever is admissible and qualified to meet the requirements of the program. Now, <clears throat> that's a little bit about the program, let's say, from a top-level view. If we look inside of the program, what happens there? Well, in the first year, you have many courses. You see all these courses here. These are all courses, compulsory courses, that students do in year number one. They're themed into or categorized into four themes that we find important um, and most of them relate in some way to academic research. Now, doing all these courses in the first year <coughs> is in itself very interesting, but there's one more thing in the first year, and that is a, a particular course, a large course in terms of ECs, it's 12 ECs, and it's called uh, Science to Experience, Exhibition Science to Experience. And it's actually where the program organizes a public exhibition in which our first year students exhibit works that offer an experience to a general public to tell an academic story. So students look for something that fascinates them in academic research and translate that into an interactive installation, a performance, a more narrative work or a more theatrical work, anything uh, they want to show in this public exhibition that is visited by many people from a general public. So it's a very nice element in, our first year, in the first year of our program. Now, <clears throat> so the first year is really about doing compulsory courses and learning all the things we find important as a basis. But the second year is where you take a more personal approach, where every student takes a more personal approach. And what does that mean? Now, to complete the program, you have to do a graduation research project, your own graduation research project, which is an actual academic research, very often published as well. And to, under, to, to prepare for your personal graduation research, students can do accent courses. They have to do s uh, several accent courses. These are courses that we organize and they can choose. You see them here in green. And they can also choose 
elective courses. And elective courses are courses that can be given by any department, not only our department, any department outside the media technology program, inside the media technology program, um, at a different university, Delft University, Amsterdam University, you name it. Some, some of our students do these courses abroad in different countries in the form of an exchange. But selecting accent courses and elective courses is a great way for a student to really prepare themselves for the personal graduation research. A very important thing. Now, this personal graduation research is an actual academic study that every student does. And they ask their own personal <coughs> academic question, personal scientific question. It doesn't have to be sciences as in natural sciences. It can also be in the field of humanities, philosophy, in fields of social sciences, more psychologically related works, more about the human, let's say. Uh, but they can certainly be also be scientific or, let's say, technology-oriented uh, works. Now, <clears throat> the student is really the boss of their own research. And they're helped by two thesis advisors. And um, um, it's where the student really chooses what they want to study, what they want to research. In the end, they write a thesis in the form of an academic paper, and where possible, we always submit these papers together with the academic advisors to a conference, to an actual academic conference, uh, sometimes in Holland, very mostly abroad, not in Holland, and a student can visit that conference to present the paper for real academics in an actual scientific conference and have a publication at their name. Naturally, not that doesn't happen for every graduation work, but it happens for the better ones. Um, while doing the graduation project, students also participate in what we, what we call the graduation lab. It's where they work together uh, and basically share ideas and experiences about their graduation work, just to make sure that, that they don't get lost in their own work. Now, I've been talking about our students, and you've already seen two of them that I have here with me, but um, uh, what kind of students do we have in our program? Well, if we would have to summarize it shortly, they all have an academic research interest. That's incredibly important. They must have a research interest, an interest in academic research. Um, they are generally conceptual thinkers. They're critical. They have some technical affinity. They need to be able to program, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Uh, but these are, this is the profile of the students that we have and the students that we admit into our program. Now, if we look at the admission requirements for the program, you can only enter the program if you have a completed bachelor, de bachelor degree. You can already apply for a program before you have completed your bachelor, but you must have a bachelor, de bachelor degree once you enter the program. Now, we do not have any restrictions <clears throat> on which bachelor, bachelor degree that is, what topic it is. So it can be from the humanities, it can be from the sciences, it can be uh, uh, from the social sciences, anything really. <clears throat> so we've had students with artistic backgrounds, with, uh, uh, let's say, hard sci natural sciences backgrounds, like the two students who joined me today here. Um, but students really need to have this personal interest and need to be able to substantiate it. Um, they need also a creative attitude. Of course, they have to do an English test, and they need to be able to do some computer programming. Not much. That's okay. But you need to be able to do some computer programming. Um, <clears throat> it's very important to realize that if you do not have computer programming as a skill learned in your bachelor program, then you can, you can actually, before entering our program, so not before applying, so you can apply immediately, but before entering the program, before really studying here, you can actually meet the programming, programming requirement by doing a single online course. It's roughly 21 to 28 hours of work. You can do that from the comfort of your own home, <clears throat> just to prepare your programming skills. Now, this is not a pre-master. We do not have a pre-master program. We don't have a pre-master requirement, right? Um, so that's very important. Um, it's also important to realize that be, uh, part of the selection procedure, this admission selection procedure, is a personal interview also. So every student who applies for the Media Technology Program must go through one of these, um, you know, basically, admission interviews. Now, uh, I think that's all I want to say about the program currently. And um, <clears throat> um, I think it's nice to see, um, to ask a little bit from, our, from the two students that I have here and maybe see if people at home have some questions. But I would like to start this by first um, asking you two, maybe Zoe, you can start. Mm -hmm. So um, why did you choose <laughs> for the media <laughs> technology program after your chemistry 
bachelor? So what I really found during my bachelor is that in my bachelor they always gave you like a question which you needed to answer or mm -hmm. the methods how you needed to do like the research mm -hmm. and I really wanted to something more broad where I could explore my own ideas and okay. combine chemistry with other fields. Yeah. And in my bachelor that was not really possible and then I found this bachelor where I was basically allowed to explore my yeah. own ideas. So Okay. Yeah that's I, I, I recognize that. I think yeah. really exploring your own ideas, not being um, told to do something in a particular yeah. way is really a, a trademark of our program yeah, and, and, and the interdisciplinary. Yeah, and it pushed me a little bit outside of my safe field <laughs> as well. <laughs> outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, that's sure. good to hear. Yeah. But that was okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. what I actually wanted. Yeah. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. What about you, Hendrik? You did. Uh, you told us, what was it? Neuroscience? Yeah, neuroscience. Yeah. A bachelor? Yeah. And what made you choose for the Media Technology Master of Science program? Yeah, actually quite, I think, uh, some overlapping things as what Zoe said, and that's really that the master, uh, as you told, gives you the skills to uh, develop yourself as a creative researcher mm -hmm. and really to find out like what things do you find interesting to research and then get the tools to research that. Yeah. Because from my uh, bachelor's experience, it's, it's very streamlined, like how to research certain topics, yeah. and this really... Uh, gives you the freedom and also the responsibility. To yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hear you say it's, it's just like Zoe, it's, it's the, 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 the possibility to do more, to follow your own interests and yeah. not be stuck to certain methodology. But you also <coughs> mentioned the possibility, so the, the technology, basically, the skills that we, the skill set that we add to our students. Oh. Yeah, definitely. You get nice. introduced to a lot of new techniques and yeah. lot of, uh, stuff yeah. that you can use. Yeah. No, that's very that's nice cool. to hear. Yeah. Now, thank you. Um, <clears throat> now, let's see if we have any uh, questions from home. Um, um, let's see, are there any questions at this moment? Um, the, um, need to prepare your questions. Let's see, I don't see any questions from home yet. Um, yes, there's a question from someone who says, I have a bachelor in psychology, would that connect to the Media Technology Master of Science program? Now that's a, a question that I understand very well. I mean, I can really understand that if you, um, if you have a bachelor, de bachelor degree that does not, at first glance, um, you teach you the same thing, um, you know, would it connect? In my opinion, yes. And um, so I'm going to say a little bit about it, but I'm also going to ask um, Zoe and Hendrik here to comment on this as well. Um, so we are really prepared for accepting students with very heterogeneous, as it's called, very different backgrounds. We have students with arts backgrounds, with social sciences backgrounds. And um, so we are very much prepared uh, in that. Um, so, and I think actually having a psychology background would connect very, would connect very well to the um, media technology program. But let me ask you guys, you have a different background, chemistry for you, Zoe, yeah. and neuroscience for you, Hendrik. How was it to make the switch? So in terms of like, skills you had or lacked or, or and how would that be for students in general Zoe, I, see uh, I think skills <coughs> that you lack there's not anything that you really need mm -hmm. everything you really need you get thought or you can dive deeper into it more yourself mm -hmm. and i think it's really the beauty that everyone has a different background because yeah. when you're combined together on a project you really see that everyone has a different take and perspective on the project so yeah. i think every so you have worked in projects with students that have very different yeah, backgrounds from chemistry. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when I collaborate with Hendrik, for example, mm -hmm. we really always see that we have a bit of chemistry and a bit of neuroscience in there. Like okay. everyone gives their own take on the project. If I'm not mistaken, you also did a project in a course that I taught that actually created a IKEA manual for particular, True. that was you, right? Yeah. For particular chemistry yeah. uh, and the questions. And the one who I work with, she did UX design. So ah. she did like the whole design part and I did as well the chemistry so part. So the two of you did it, one with a background in user experience design yeah. and the other you with chemistry. Yeah. Very nice, yeah. thank you. Let's see if there's any uh, more questions. Yes, uh, Esmeralda van Werkhoven, she asks, how much time would we be spending at the faculty during the week? And uh, sub question is: Is it located in Leiden or the Den Haag? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I'm going to answer that. The first, the second part of that question: Is it located in Leiden or Den Haag? Well, um, it's located fully in Leiden. Uh, we do collaborate with the Arts Academy and the Royal School of Music, and it is possible for students, for example, to do elective courses there. But the courses that we organize are all in Leiden, uh, which is. For those who don't know, let's say by public transportation, 15 minutes um, from the Haag. So these cities, two cities are pretty close. Now the second question was, how much time do you spend per week 
at the faculty, so basically at the university. Um, well, actually, I think that's a question. Maybe, Hendrik, <laughs> you can uh, answer that question probably better than I can. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. It really depends on which time you are in the year yeah. uh, with the amount of hours that you're at the faculty. Um, yeah, I don't know, a rough estimate. Uh, I would say at least three to four days you have like I think in the first year four or five four to maybe, five more yeah. yeah it depends on the course you're taking like some courses are like you're there uh, every day of the week and sometimes yeah. also in the evening if yeah. you want to <laughs> and then sometimes it's a bit like three days and four days yeah. okay yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and also for a lot of courses, uh, our collabor uh, collaborative effort, effort. Yeah. so uh, it's really nice to be there and to work on it as a team. So you should also take that in account. Yeah, that yeah. is something. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. from my experience, the, um, uh, the classes themselves are, let's say, four hours per day, maybe four, four days per week, something like that. And apart from that, it's mainly project work that you do with students, uh, with other students a lot, sometimes alone, but also uh, with other students. So yeah, I guess that takes time as well. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, uh, Esmeralda. Um, there's another question from Melissa Cristina. And uh, Melissa says, I graduated with a bachelor's, bachelor's degree in education, accounting education. Very interesting. I did not know that existed uh, a few years ago. But I have been working as a software developer for three years. Does that mean I meet the requirements without having a basic computer course? No, that's a very interesting question. Maybe I can answer that, Melissa. Um, uh, that's difficult for me to answer at this moment for your personal particular case. But um, in, in general, and that may very well apply to you, if you have computer coding skills, and with computer coding skills, we mean the skill of having an ID, translating that into an algorithm, and then translating that algorithm into code, right? If you have that skill, then you meet the requirements. That's basically what we always say. Now, what does that mean? That means that, first of all, that I didn't mention a particular language. So we're not interested in what language people can code in. That's really, that's not interesting. As look, coding is really the process of translating an ID to an algorithm and an algorithm to um, code. Now, secondly, it also means that um, HTML and CSS coding is not computer coding. That's not algorithmic coding. But if you were a true software developer, so if you have really written uh, code that actually executes, so to say, then quite likely you would meet this requirement. But let me say that if you would not meet the requirement, and this holds for, you know, in general for people who do not, I'm not saying you do not, but for people who do not meet the requirement, it's very easy to meet that requirement because you can, doing this course, this online course, um, is you can do it in your own time and it's only we hear from students that it's somewhere between 20 and 28 hours work to do this course online and um, so you know it's, it's still pretty easy to meet that requirement um, let's see um, if there are any any um, other questions I see a question here uh, by Jul Hoogland um, hi if you want to start in February which would be then 2024 someone who's planning ahead I guess very good if you want to start in February with the master how does that work now that's an interesting question uh, I'm, I'm afraid Zoe and Hendrik uh, I'm the person who should answer this question I guess because you both started in uh, September well um, if you start in February then basically you do the, so we work in semesters the whole program is four semesters right and semester is a half year one semester goes from September to February and the other semester from February to July basically and uh, we have four because it's two years now if you start in February you basically reverse the order of semester one and two that's that's what you're doing and um, that has a, a few drawbacks because some of the um, courses in semester two but not many rely on skills <coughs> or qualities <coughs> that you have obtained in semester one now if you reverse these order as our September students do then that means that you should have slightly more, let's say, academic skills already and programming skills, uh, because those are taught in our program in semester one. Uh, so basically for semester intake, we, uh, it's certainly possible, and we, every year we have semester uh, February students, sorry, a lot less than in um, September, typically three, four in February, and typically somewhere between, let's say, 25 and 30 in, um, uh, in September. But um, if you start in February, then 
we are slightly more strict in seeing if you meet the qualifications. But apart from that, it's very well possible. It also has advantages because you're actually suddenly part of two years. So you, you, you get to meet many more fellow students if you're a February starter. Well, I hope that answers your question. Um, well, another question. Um, I'm going to, be, I'm looking for, a, I see two now, and I'm looking for a question that I can have one of the students with me answer. One of the questions is how much freedom is there in the program and how much can I shape the program? Now, that's an interesting question. Um, I can say something about it, but I've been talking a lot already. Um, you guys are second year students, Hendrik and uh, Zoe, and that means you're in the year where you basically specialize towards your graduation. Now, how have you experienced particularly this second year, but maybe also the first year? What, let's start with this first year. In the first year, maybe Hendrik, you can answer this. How much freedom do you have within the courses to, to choose your own way? Uh, so in the for, first year, you in have, the first year. Yeah, you have a lot of mandatory courses that are just mm -hmm. part of your first year program. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's quite a straight line to yeah. follow those courses. Uh, in your first year, you do have like time if you're interested to take honors uh, classes or anything yeah. like that. But the first year is quite. But there's also within the course. courses there's freedom. I see Zoe yeah. uh, shaking her head. So you experience fr there's also freedom within the compulsory courses. Is that correct? Yeah, like with almost every course you have a project, and with mm -hmm. that project you are always like pretty free to do whatever you want. Yeah. And also the exhibition project you talked about. Yeah. That's also you're really free to steer that in a direction. Yeah, and that's also in the first year. So, I, yeah. w one of my favorite assignments to give to students is show me what you learned. And then they freak out because they say, well, how, how am I supposed to show you? Think about that. How can yeah. you best show me what you learned? Make something, write something, do something that shows me what you learned. And that gives you very much freedom to do what you want. And now the second year, you're both in the second year. Um, uh, Zoe, maybe. So what, um, what have you chosen for your personal um, yeah, per for your personal interest yeah, in the second so year? So you have to do a few accent courses mm -hmm. within the master. Yeah. Um, and the ones I chose are all like coding and uh, AI based. Mm -hmm. and oh, so artificial intelligence related courses. Yeah. 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 Uh, and next to that, I'm also doing like chemistry courses again. Oh, I, really? Yeah, because I was like, oh, why not? Let's just keep the, yeah, my yeah. knowledge a bit. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm mainly focusing on like natural computing and Oh, nat natural computing is a field where you use, for example, the theories of evolution or yeah. of how the brain works to, to work. It's a field of artificial intelligence, yeah. really. So okay, I'm very doing a lot of that. Yeah. Very interesting. What about you, Hendrik? What courses did you do in the second year? Um, yeah, so I'm also taking a lot of uh, creative computational courses, so okay. some that are part of the Accent courses that the MediaTek program uh, provides. Yeah. And creative, and just for clarity, creative computation is, or computational creativity are courses that deal with making computers more creative. It's exactly. also a subfield yeah. of artificial intelligence that is yeah. very hot currently. Yeah, and also yeah. the collaboration with uh, yeah. creative systems and stuff. Okay, yeah. uh, and furthermore, I'm going to take a, a neuroscience course at my uh, old university again. Okay. And um, uh, next week, I'm going to start a course about environmental psychology. Environmental psychology. Yeah. Very interesting, very yeah. interesting. It's interesting to see that both of you also fill in some of the elective space with fields that you have worked in before in your bachelor. Now, um, we had a psychology student earlier asking a question, would a psychology program fit um, uh, the media technology program? We see this, the same thing and we like that. You know, if you, if you have enjoyed your bachelor and you switch to the media technology program, I think it's very wise to actually, you know, use the, the, the way of doing academic research that we teach people and, but specialize a little more in the field that you did in your bachelor. It's not necessary. I know that many students do different things, but it's certainly possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Melissa Cristina has another question, and she says, this program is really interesting. Well, thank you very much. That's not the question yet, of course. But I want to know from the students if joining the program met their expectations and what were the most difficult and most fun things they have done so far. I like this question. So did the, did the program meet your expectations and what were the most difficult and most fun things? So who of you is going to answer this question first? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, no, it, it kind of uh, exceeded my expectations a bit. Okay, above in, your expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as in the amount of uh, freedom and creativity you have in your own projects. Uh, and that's kind of the thing that also uh, tunes into what's the most difficult part. And that is suddenly you get all this freedom and yeah. uh, room to uh, really go after your own interests, but it requires some skill to actually hone that and to, yeah, to really okay. be able to form okay. something out of personal interest. And if, yeah. if you call this a difficulty, let's say 
you know, what, was it a problem or is it something you had to get used to? Or how, how did you deal with this? Can you, can you say that or is that difficult? Um, yeah, it's something I think you have to get a bit used to. Okay. And because it is something that I was personally interested yeah. in to do, yeah. but um, the courses really provide you a kind of like free space and also in okay. collaboration with yeah. other students yeah. to uh, learn the kind of trial and error yeah. method of creating, uh, yeah. yeah, failing a bit and then keeping that's on so creating. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. So that's about the expectations and what's difficult. What was most fun? Um, yeah, so I think two things I also already said, like the collaborative aspe aspect is that you really work a lot with your fellow students. They're from a lot of different backgrounds and mm -hmm. a lot of interesting people. So that's really fun. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you're really motivated to create uh, yeah, unique kind of yeah. uh, your own projects. Nice. Uh, so that's okay. also a lot more valuable when you, yeah. Very nice. Thing. What about you, Zoe? I think it's the same for me. Like what Henrik says, spot on. But I also feel like... Um, because you have a lot of freedom, uh -huh. people go really all on on the projects. Like we put in so much time. A lot of time we were like, we don't need to put in so much time. But just because you really like it, beca yeah. because you choose the subject yourself. Yeah, it's really a personal project. Yeah, you're yeah. really motivated to put in a lot of time. Yeah. So oftentimes we have to like hold each other back and like, okay, <laughs> it's fine now, we should stop. <laughs> 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 That's so, very interesting. Yeah, I think... Like that's one of the things I was like, oh, I'm putting in so much time, but yeah. I do it because I like it. So. And can you, make, you guys, one of you, I don't care who, uh, or maybe both, say something about the culture. I mean, you've been talking about working together with students and you form a group. Yeah. And I think part of expectations and fun and difficulties not, is not only about the academic part of the program, but also about the culture. Can you say a little bit about the culture that we have, that you experience in the program? Yeah. So how I do people... I Work think together. we are a really close group, like our class, also because it's relatively small size. Mm -hmm. So we just hang out a lot. Also after school, like we have dinner together or we maybe after class we stay and everyone brings food and we have lunch. So I think yeah. we're a pretty like close yeah. group. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As a teacher for me, it's really, um, I, I see how students, you know, engage with, with each other also within programs, sometimes without, I see them walking the halls or, or, or you know, sitting outside but also as, as a teacher I, I find it very interesting that we really try to make this atmosphere where we see our the, the students basically as academic collaborators to the staff and I find that very much fun so the, the distance is pretty small we even go together on study trips uh, all the students to for example to the Ars Electronica Media Arts Festival we do that in September well that, did you guys because you guys are from a corona year yeah so when you started that was not possible but did you guys join us last this year yeah, you did, yeah, right? Totally, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, I don't remember that much because I had a lot of fun at the festival. <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's also a shared thing that really bonds students and staff together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I definitely. like that as well. Yeah. So um, there's a, another question from Esmeralda. <coughs> Esmeralda asks, uh, I currently study communication and multimedia design in uh, Seto Hombos, which is in Holland, for those who don't know. Uh, is it bold of me to say <laughs> that media technology is the academic version of my current study? Now, this question would be a little bit difficult for you guys to answer, I guess, but I happen to know a lot about communication and media design, uh, multimedia design programs in the Netherlands. Um, <clears throat> it's not the same, definitely not. It's not the academic version of what you do at, at CMD. Let's call your program CMD. Um, the difference, the main difference is, see, let me tell you, we've had relatively many students joining us from CMD programs. And they like the program and they do well. Let me first start with saying that. But having said that, it's not the same thing. It's not like a deeper version or an extended version or a more academic version of what you guys do. It's really different. First of all, in the communication and multimedia design program that you currently do, um, you are really focusing on applied sciences and meaning you solve other people's problems. Someone, you're, you're really taught to solve other people's problems. Someone has a design problem or uh, some, some problem that you guys are trained for to solve. Now that's different in our program. In fundamental research, the kind of research that we do at Leiden University, we are interested in helping other people, but it's not our primary goal, it's our secondary goal. Our primary goal is to do academic research, which is very different from applied research. It's about generating new knowledge, forming new theories, testing hypotheses. So it's really about generating knowledge without, well, outside of the applied context. Someone else can then apply that knowledge 
to solve a problem, but we don't do that. So that's the first main difference between communication and multimedia design and what we do. Um, the second difference is, is that in the communication and multimedia design programs, um, you are really taught about a particular topic, namely communication and multimedia design. Now, in our program, we are not a topical program. We don't focus on a particular topic per se. Students can you know, research whatever it is they want, psychology, arts, um, philosophy, natural sciences, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, creative computation. So <clears throat> we are not focused on a particular topic. We are a methodological research program. So we teach you how to do research, not what to research. And that's also a difference. Having said that, um, it, is, it is certainly a good fit, but it's not the same. You really enter a new world when you switch from communication and multimedia design, applied sciences programs, to the media technology master of science program. But, you know, and, and we have very much experience with CMD students entering our program. Um, <clears throat> let's see, another program. What careers, another question, sorry. What careers have the graduates gone to in general? Again, a question that may be difficult for you guys to answer because you're still in the program. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm guessing it's a question that I will have to answer. <clears throat> sorry. Well, we, we have a, um, let me start by saying that we are still in touch with many, many, many of our alumni. And um, the reason is that, as I already mentioned, it's a, we have a fairly strong and collaborative culture that we have, a very open culture also, in which we share a lot between staff and students. And, um, you know, and, and that makes it also for our, our alumni, they're used to stay in touch with our program. So whenever we have like a social drink in our program, Basically, there's always alumni that show up and, and join us. There's also programs where we have alumni tell our students about what happened to them after the program. So we're still in touch with our alumni. Now, having said that, I can tell you a little bit about what they do. So we, we train them or we educate them to be able to become an academic researcher. And that's really the interest of most of our alumni, to become an academic researcher. And I would say that roughly <clears throat> one third of our students actually becomes an academic researcher. That means they generally go into PhD programs, for example. So, you know, they continue their, their uh, yeah, it's not really studies a PhD, but they, they write, they do thesis research for four years to get a PhD, which is something you need uh, to have done to be able to work at a university. Now, that's roughly one third of our students. Um, a big chunk, maybe half of the students, um, goes into what in Holland, in the Netherlands, we call creative industry. C creative industry is a collaborative term, uh, sorry, an all-encompassing term, a term that describes companies that work on, uh, let's say, IT, but not static IT, but dynamic IT, front-end IT, um, ex um, companies that make, for example, um, uh, exhibits for Musea, for example, is a very strong example of creative uh, a creative industry and all these kind of companies some have research functions in companies like this so they 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 research what works well and what doesn't work well or they have design uh, functions we're not a design program but they may have learned that in the bachelor and then the remaining part that would be roughly let's say one th six of the uh, students um, that's varied that really varies uh, quite many of that part become um, s uh, somehow self-employed so either as a uh, creative and performing artist or as a self-employed um, um, let's say self-employed employed, uh, expert in uh, for example technology or things like that so that's pretty much where our uh, alumni end up yeah I hope that answers your question uh, um, Let's see. I don't see any new questions at this moment. I see a question that we already had. Let's see if some new questions show up. Um, no, I don't think so. So I think it's pretty much time to wrap up. Uh, before I wrap up um, everything, I would like to ask uh, uh, Zoe and Henry, is there something you have on your mind after listening and talking about this? Is there something you would like to say to, the, to potential students or interested students? If not, that's um, okay. But, uh, I, yeah, I recommend before applying, mm -hmm. go to the course list like and look at the courses, especially maybe the courses in the first year, yeah. and really read the description and see yeah. if that sparks your interest. Yeah. And if you like it, I think that's one of the best ways to also know what the program is yeah. and yeah. what we do. I would like to add to that. In my experience, it's, it's also equally important to look at some of the thesis. 
from yeah. our program. I see Henry yeah. goes, yes, that's important. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So if, you are, if students are considering the Media Technology Master of Science program, I think it's very important to go through some of the theses yeah. that our students are reading. You don't have to read them all or, or even read one fully, but at least read the abstracts, for example. Th yeah. I think that gives an idea of what yeah. kind of research our students do, right? For sure. Okay, yeah. thank you. Well, um, that's it then from uh, Zoe Breed, Hendrik Scheres, uh, me, Martin Lamers. I would like to point those of you who are present at the moment um, that we also have some more information events coming up. Actually, um, one in this month, because on um, November 25th, we have an information evening here in Leiden. So it means that teachers, students are there. You can actually ask them questions. They will tell you about the program more, but you can actually meet these people live in person. Um, there's a, in February, I cannot see the exact date at the moment, um, but uh, on February 6th, there is also a, um, a same information evening also in Leiden. Um, I think if you're interested in joining the Media Technology Program, I think the most important thing to do is to act immediately and to either visit, you're already here, so that's very good, but to gain as much information as you can, go to our website, look at our thesis, study the course list, do all these things really, and apply as soon as possible because the whole application process may take some time. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, please go to our website, which is mediatechnology.leiden.education.edu. Uh, so mediatechnology.leiden.edu. And uh, that's the website that we maintain ourselves as a program, and it contains all the theses, um, stories from students, um, everything you need to know about the admission requirements, etc. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you here in Leiden.